Okay, uh, let me uh, hit the hit the share screen button here. Okay, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, using email in an emergency. Uh, this is the, the ARIES group we'll be presenting and you'll be seeing this as we go along. So I, I won't do introductions at this point. Uh, one thing I will note is that if you wanna go on to YouTube, you can find lots of super clean demonstrations of people doing ham radio email. So there's plenty of things to see there, but here you are going to see us without a net. We are going to be doing it live. We're gonna be doing it with all the wrinkles. So, uh, so bear with us if, uh, if challenges come up. I will mention that as of about eight minutes ago, we got an email saying that one of the, uh, the systems that we are, are using is experiencing some problems. So we'll all be biting our nails when we get to, to Greg's part of the presentation. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about um, everyone uses email and why can't we send and receive it using ham radio? Well, of course we can, that's what this is all about. And uh, one of the things that you will receive uh, via the club email list is actually going to be a, uh, uh, a message that tells you how you can get up, set up to use ham radio email. And when you do that, your email address is gonna be really easy to recognize because it's just gonna be your call sign. So, why ham radio email? Well, for ARIES, it's particularly important because in emergency situations, you can have long complex messages, some that may include attachments that need to be conveyed without error. And WinLink is capable of doing that. When they had the uh, uh, Hurricane Maria uh, response in Puerto Rico, aiding the Red Cross, one of the key features was WinLink email. Okay, satellite phones were overloaded, cell towers were down, the landline phones were all down, but they could still send, uh, send email messages back to the states using, using WinLink. Uh, one of the things that Aries also likes about the, the WinLink software is that it provides standard emergency forms for most organizations. So if we are working with the Red Cross, we've got all of the standard Red Cross forms right there. If we're doing uh, incident command system, we're, we're doing, uh, we've got the ICS forms there as well. And another nice feature is that it can send email to other hams and also to non-HAM. So if we need to send it to a .gov address, we can reach out to somebody in a different state or somewhere else in this state that has a .gov address and still send, uh, send HAM radio email to them. Now, for non-ARIES use, it's still a great way if there's an emergency to send out emails to your family to let them know that, uh, that you're okay if all of the local uh, email and internet systems or systems are down. So we're gonna do a, a progression tonight. We're going to start off using WinLink Express and that's the software for doing WinLink with the internet, no radio. I'm just gonna show you that, yep, it can work just like any other, other program. Then what we're going to do is simulate an outage of, of the local internet uh, running to our houses. So Greg, N4PGS is going to uh, do a connection using VHF to a node at Wintergreen. And that's the node that may be a little dodgy this evening as of about 10 minutes ago. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, and that simulates a local internet outage in the Charlottesville area. Then Joe, KO8V, is going to show us what happens if the internet was down all over the state? No internet in the state. We need to get out, get our messages out of the state in order to, to have them transmitted. And he'll be doing that using HF. And then finally, we'll finish up with Warren KN4LYF and Dave K4DND demonstrating to us what you can do without any internet whatsoever. They're just going to be doing it all, all using ham radio. So We'll kick things off with a demonstration here, let's say. Okay, this is the um, WinLink Express uh, screen here. Uh, 
one of the things that, about it is it looks pretty much like any email program you've ever seen in your in your entire life. We've got our, our inboxes and outboxes and sent items and so forth. We've got our list of messages and then we've got a, a display there. Now, the one thing that is different is your email program is normally going to be connecting up automatically and exchanging email without you having to make a connection. With WinLink, we're actually going to be picking a modem to connect up. Those of you who remember the old days of the internet where you used to have to use a modem, not, not crazy different here. And I'm going to be using just the, the Telnet WinLink modem here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the open, uh, open session button. And it gives me a little window that's going to display information and I'll hit start. And off it goes and sends, um, uh, sends a message that I had queued up for Greg. I had sent a, a message to, to set up a message for Greg earlier that uh, has the, the weather for the rest of the week in it. And we'll see if, if Greg, uh, Greg got that. I also downloaded three different messages there. Now, because we were going over the internet, that happened really quickly. Notice that we're doing you know, uh, tens of hundreds of thousands of bytes per minute. Uh, as you might expect on the internet. But now we'll, uh, we'll switch it over to, uh, to uh, Greg and let, uh, let him show us uh, the, the, what happens if your local internet is down. Good evening, everyone. This is Greg, N4PGS. Can you hear me? Yep, go ahead and share there, Greg. All right. And as John indicated, what we're using this evening is WinLink Express. I've got an instance of that running on my computer here at my station. And uh, we'll be attempting a higher frequency communication to a gateway, ideally in Wintergreen, where there's both a VHF and a UHF gateway. Prior to this evening, we had been practicing on the VHF uh, link. And I understand that there may be some difficulties with the VHF link right now. So I'm going to switch over to the UHF frequencies and attempt that the first time on UHF. So I'll we'll walk through that here and show you what we're doing. Like I said, we've got the WinLink Express up here. And what I'm going to do is go over to this list that John men mentioned before of modems. And you see there's quite a few modems. Dave will uh, fill you in a little bit more on this, the other types, different types of modems and whatnot. But essentially, because we're connecting one end to a, a remote station, or a central station, rather, a WinLink station, we'll be using the, one of the Vin, WinLink modems tonight. And since it's VHF UHF, I'm going to be selecting the Vera FM WinLink. So I'll select that. And you notice that pops up up here in the selection, and then I'm going to open the session. John, are you seeing something? Uh, yes, I, sorry, Greg. I was going to say, before you do, uh, if you go down to your drafts and queue up that message to the club uh, uh, about how to install WinLink, that would be good. Well, actually, you'll see I've got something in the outbox ready to go. OK. And that's the message queued up. OK, that's fine. <laughs> ready to fire. So we will. Open the session here. And let's see if the UHF link works to Wintergreen. Uh, Greg Alt, if you'd show us the um, the the modem, the, the Vera display yeah, also let's, that might let's be. Open, I'll, I'll show it to you. And there I've got a limited view of the Vera activity. And this gives me like the, the view meters and the local CPU percentage that I'm utilizing and whatnot. You see, I've got an older computer uh, using a lot of my CPU power, but still there's enough here to, to work just fine. Now it shows that we have successfully connected to the Vera FM TNC. What we'll do here, let me just pull down menus that I can see. And we will start this instance.
My radio is humming away. Looks like it's connecting. Now I'm connecting on 441.075. What I neglected to do, and I'll show you here in a little bit, is I didn't show you the channel selection. It's a limited channel selection of repeaters in the area or stations in the area. But uh, this 441.075 is on that list. And you see it's transferring messages back and forth now. So John, if your internet magic is working, I believe I sent a message to AARC at albemarleradio.org. Yep, so everybody uh, should, uh, should in, a, in a couple minutes actually be able to look in your box and see the message that Greg sent you. Uh, you won't be able to reply to Greg because uh, uh, Winlink has some uh, limits. So unless he sends a message specifically to your address, you can't reply. That's to protect you. You don't get, ever get any spam on Winlink. That's another good thing about it. Okay, the transfer happened pretty quickly. It's UHF and Optimally, it runs at 9600 baud or better, so it's a pretty fast connection. And you see I've got uh, messages here, and we'll click on one and show you what it looks like. The one that John sent me. Actually, we're on that right now. You see this is highlighted here, and here's a message down here in the text area. John sent me a weather forecast. Here's another message from uh, K4D and D, just for grins. He sent a, uh, looks like part of the, the Bill of Rights or something here. But anyway, it's a good sample message and it shows you what it's capable of doing. Now, the like I mentioned before, the sites up at uh, Wintergreen are both UHF and VHF and very serendipitously tonight you know that at the last minute one went down but the other one's still up so we've got a good connection back and forth between the rms station at winlink and we've communicated correctly to the internet all right um let me uh, get back and double check here and make sure everything's working there's a typical winlink Wednesday session report here. And we'll learn more about Winlink Wednesdays if we talk about that a little bit later on. But you see how easy it is to communicate, almost like regular email. And the speed can be pretty darn fast. I mean, you saw the UHF speed tonight and it worked quite well. So I'd like to stop at, have, at, at that success. And uh, let's switch this back to, uh, John, uh, John, have I uh, gone through the steps? I've, st I've stopped your sharing. And now we're going to pretend that the internet just went down throughout the state. And we're going to go over to uh, Joe, KO8V, and he's going to demonstrate using it to go uh, uh, outside the state. Well, good evening to everybody. I hope you can, everybody can hear me. Yes? Yep. Um, some of you have noticed, uh, real quick, uh, as an intro here, some of you have noticed that I've got two sessions running. One of the things I've discovered, at least on my system, is that Zoom seems to interfere somewhat with the uh, sound card use uh, on my system. I have probably about five different sound cards plugged into my computer for different radios and the like. And I think Zoom somewhat interferes with it. So what I'm doing is I'm running Zoom on my main machine just to give you the desktop. And then I'm using an iPad to do the, the uh, video and the audio here. So hopefully uh, we'll still be able to get through. Okay, so as we mentioned, uh, we're gonna try and reach outside our state. And uh, of course, as we all know, VHF, generally doesn't reach that far. HF, we can reach anywhere that somebody can hear us. So tonight, uh, we're going to uh, go with the Vera HF uh, link. Now again, it's the same list there. And some of you may be asking about this Vera thing. What is that all about? Well, Vera is a 
reasonably priced um, any, from free to a little bit of money, but it is pretty much state of the art on what you can get uh, for a sound card modem without spending thousands of dollars for a PacTorch modem. It will compete with PacTorch if you've heard of that. So right now we do have a clear frequency, which is good. Uh, KB3 PCY is who I'm going to attempt, try to attempt to uh, connect to. He's located up in the Philadelphia area. I'll bring up my volume a little bit and hopefully you can hear some of the tinkle tinkles that are going on in the background. Uh, we've got about 100 watts going out. And of course, this being 80 meters uh, and in the evening, there are often difficulties. And we did not get our connection. So what I will do is I will pick another station uh, that I've known to work. Unfortunately, his channel is currently busy. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, somebody's there. All right, we're gonna go a little bit lower. Fire. Nope, somebody's got CW going. <laughs> it, it never fails, the channels fill up. Yes, they do, unfortunately. So you know, we've got a lot of lot of choices out there, John. <laughs> right. And what there is is channel selection. This is something I've updated some time ago, a little bit ago, a few days ago. And what it will do is give us some predicted reliabilities for connections. So what I'm looking for is maybe something that's a little bit more out of the way. And that isn't going to be it. And neither is that. Yeah. yeah, if you're, and what Joe's looking at is the pattern on the waterfall. If that waterfall so showing a signal, he knows that the that he shouldn't be transmitting yep. on top of him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my original guy again. Uh, sometimes things start to get through on a second try. Now some of these meters that you're looking at here. Uh, the audio input, it's just a level of uh, what our sound is coming in. Uh, of course, CPU usage, I've got a pretty good machine here. Ah, looks like we're going to get a connection. Yep, we've made our connection. It's telling us that he's 319 kilometers away. Okay, so far our bit rate's not too bad. Our signal to noise ratio is very good. Uh, we're well up into the green. So that's all good information. So let's hope this uh, holds together. And it looks like I've got two messages. So what I'm going to do is set it to only download one of them. So we're actually doing quite well uh, tonight. We're uh, so far we've hit about 200, 700 bits per second, and as the bit rate goes up, you can hear the uh, tones go from less musical to more of a scratchy noise because we're covering more of the bandwidth. And that is our transmission. So we got it all. And that's the message that Dave K4DND sent, sent me. And he's just giving me a little information about the club. So uh, I will let you know through all of our practice sessions, this is the best one that's happened so far. <laughs> so uh, again, as with HF and all things, it's sometimes you, you just take your luck. Anyway, uh, so I guess I'll send it back to John now. And of course, we'll be here for questions at the end. Yep, I, I will say that uh, that our, our, our test sessions setting up for this meeting were were probably the the worst performance I've seen on HF 
quote him in a long time, but the the performance that he he had right there is not not really all that unusual. It's just unusual during a demonstration when things always go wrong. Uh, okay, now we're going to uh, pretend that the internet is completely down everywhere. There's no no internet's working at all. We still want to get some email messages out. So let's pass it over to Dave, K4D and D. All right, thanks. Again, we have our basic WinLink Express uh, screen, which you all should be kind of familiar with by now. And uh, I'm going to uh, create a message. I don't have a message waiting. So um, I thought it would be fun for you to see that. And then Warren and I have, we, we have a schedule set up and it's time for our, for our connection. And, uh, uh, and we, we, have a, uh, we, we have a frequency that we've agreed upon and we're gonna try it on that frequency. So first we I have to make a message. So I'm gonna make a new message and I'm gonna send it to KN4LYF. And when like demo test message. And I'm just going to paste in some. No, nope, that's not what I'm going to paste. Sorry about that. I've got some information from the uh, club website about the board of directors. So for some reason, I really need to send that to Warren. Okay, so uh, because, uh, because we're going to do a peer-to-peer -peer connection, what we absolutely have to do is say this is a peer-to-peer -peer message, and I'll, I'll explain that in just a moment. So I'm going to save it as a peer-to-peer -peer message and post it to the outbox. Now I've got my message in the outbox, and here it is, and that's going to Warren, okay? Now I have to select a modem and we're back to this pull down screen for the various modems. All of these modems at the top of the list that say WinLink, all of those modems involve the internet. And a message uh, would have to go out as a WinLink message. Uh, it's going to go to a gateway, either a VHF, UHF or an HF gateway it's going to go from that gateway station that receives it. It's going to go on their internet into the internet world, and then it can be downloaded uh, by the re recipient uh, from it, wherever they are because it's on it's on a, a cloud server. These modems down here are all indicating P2P, and P2P stands for peer to peer. Um, there's no internet involved, but the only way you're going to get a message through using a peer-to-peer -peer modem is if the message has been, has been saved as a peer-to-peer as -peer message. And you can see here that the recipient, KN4LYF, it's, this is indicating that it is, in fact, a peer-to-peer -peer message. So I'm going to open up the Vera HF peer-to-peer -peer modem. And looks like we have a little activity. No, I think we're okay. All right, so uh, Warren, if you want to, why don't you uh, connect to me and let's, let's see if we can transfer this peer-to-peer -peer message. Warren, are you still with us? Sorry about that, I'd unmute. Uh, what we have on the peer-to-peer uh, -peer session screen is the fact that uh, Dave and I are both looking at each other and we're on schedule. So I am going to hit well, the we, start we, button. No, we've got some CW on that frequency, Warren. So let's go, let's go up a little bit. Uh, 
How far? Uh, I think uh, we're free now. Go ahead. Okay. So uh, we have a clear frequency and we're going to be uh, sending uh, messages back and forth as, uh, as they're available. And uh, this is without any inter interaction uh, with the internet whatsoever. I'm going to hit the start button on the upper right hand uh, side there. Uh, before you do, your CW is back. All right. Too late. I okay. already hit it. Well, we shouldn't be here long. All right, and you can see uh, we're, we're receiving, we, uh, we've connected with Warren. He's got one that we're gonna download it. At the, the green bar run across the top from left to right is the send and the download uh, receive is right to left. All right, so with apologies to the, to the CW uh, QSO, we're gonna get out of the way. So we've made our connection. We've, uh, Warren has received a message from me and here I've received a message from Warren. So that's, uh, that's, that's a peer to peer connection. And with that, I'm going to stop the screen share and send it back to John. You're muted, John. I will start my screen sharing again um, and go back to our, uh, our PowerPoint presentation. Uh, one of the things you've received, and I checked, uh, it did. Uh, Greg was successful in using WinLink to send the message out to the club email list. Is going to be instructions on how, if you'd like to install WinLink yourself, you can do it. And yes, it works fine. We showed it over the internet. So if you are not yet in a position where you can do it via radio, you can still uh, still use it. Um, when the program first comes up, it's going to show you a screen that looks like this. When you, you install the WinLink software, it does run only under Windows. You install that software, and the first thing that comes up when you run it is this screen. And you really only need to fill in your call sign. You need to decide what password you would like to use with WinLink. You need to tell it what uh, email address it should contact you at if you have to reset your password or something like that. So that's a non-WinLink email address there. And then your grid square, your location. Like I, I'm uh, FM08RA. And if I, you know your latitude and longitude, you can just uh, click that button and it will, uh, will take you to a little calculator that will figure out that grid square for you. There's lots of other things you can fill in here. You don't have to fill them in entirely, entirely uh, optional there. So with that, uh, we'll throw it over. Are there, uh, are there any, uh, any questions about what we've done and, and maybe what you'd like to learn more about and, or any other comments? So I'll stop sharing there and let's get with it.